So we're back with 44-year-old Alejandra, who has been dating uh, Jaden, who's quite a bit older. Uh, she's been dating him for a little over two months, and things are going quite well and swimmingly. And she states that she has been uh, very rulesy and wants to know, again, I want you to state it, Alejandro, exactly what for me? What would be most helpful to you? Um, guide me along <laughs> what I need to speak to make sure, ensure the best possibilities of a proposal and marriage within a year or before the year is over. Excellent. I like that you are thinking this way, especially in terms of a man who has not been married before and is in his 50s, that's fair to say, right? Late, yes. Late 50s. Okay. And he's not been married. He has no children. So he's been a free uh, agent his entire adult life. Yes. Which does concern me in a way. I'll say that much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell me what he has told you about that. Well, he has been dedicated to his career his entire life. Um, he has a, a, a career that does require a lot of dedication, and he's very uh, reputable in his field. So um, it's just always taken up his time. He's put that before anything else. He says he never imagined that he wouldn't get married and have a family. But before he knew it, it was too late, and he would work seven days a week practically, 6 a.m. to 10, 11 p.m., and um, now he's realized that there's other things to life that you can't take time back, and he is, you know, he says he was looking for a partner to enjoy the rest of his life with what he's worked for all his life, and, um, and uh, do that, explore that side of his life that he hasn't had time to do before. And you stated earlier that he's considering retiring or he's definitely retiring. So his plan, what he tells me, is that he is doing things right now to wrap them up, to have his business sold by the end of the year so that then it will just um, make him an income that he could just live off of um, for the rest of his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's his plan. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's take this. Uh, in little chunks here about what I feel would be very helpful to you to help you reach your goal, which is a proposal. It sounds like pretty much by the end of this year, meaning around Christmas time or next uh, New Year's Eve or latest next Valentine's Day in terms of proposal. Is that about right? Yes. Cool. What happened this Valentine's Day, now that we mention it, by the way? Well, this Valentine's Day, um, he was going to be out of town for Valentine's, as he is right now, just happened. But, um, and um, either way, we're both actually sick with COVID right now. Oh, I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. I think it's okay. It's mild. Um, but um, I did, uh, he did have me go over to his apartment, and he had me a dozen red roses. Um, as an early Valentine's. So, um, yeah, and then, of course, even though he was out of town on business, um, he did, you know, we did interact on Valentine's Day. But, yeah, it wasn't exactly the ideal Valentine's. <laughs> Got it. So you say that when he's in town, which is about how much? Is he there 100% of the time, 50% oh, of the time? How much is he in town with you? No, he's here 100% of the time. This is the first time that he had to leave for two weeks to take care of some uh, sale of property. He was, wait, he was going to do it earlier, but, you know, with the weather, and then um, finally he decided to do it. I see. So you, your situation is that you live with your older adult children or your mother or yes, it's correct. a situation like that? Okay. And yeah, so... And I'm sorry, between here and obviously because of the pandemic, I have and also in Europe. But yes, mm -hmm. well, but I've been here now for a year and I've been here obviously since I met him. Got it. And you see each other at his apartment or place about twice a week? Well, he invites me first out on a date. We don't I don't, don't just go to his apartment other than now that I was sick. So I couldn't we mm -hmm. couldn't go anywhere. But no, he invites me on an appropriate date. Um, twice a week at very nice places, either picks me up or has an Uber pick me up. 
And then afterwards, we go to his place. And usually on the weekends, we'll spend then a couple of days together, go out on his bowl. We'll go, we'll cook together, do things like that. Mm -hmm. All right. And you say that he's texting you every morning? Yes. And several times during the day. Yes. And several times during the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you, if you don't hear from him, you text him at night? Well, no, I always hear from him. I'm saying if I don't hear from him at night, because he sometimes falls asleep, I'll text him and then he'll answer me back when he gets up in the middle of the night. But, um, but yeah, he, he, I, I never am the first one to text him in the day. Okay. So this may sound harsh, but if this keeps going as it is, you could have some problems down the road. Okay, sure. Let me know. What is it? What is it? I'm going to start at the beginning. And that went very well. And that's always super important. You presented quite the challenge from the beginning. And that's great. That's going to serve you well. So it's, it's both end here. It's not, you know, a slam dunk. But that is always a seriously important component that we look at. How did things start? You presented quite the challenge. Remember my three C's of men, challenge, competition, conquering. Okay? Okay. So the challenge was there. That's excellent. You stated that you met around December 2nd or so? December 1st was our first date, yes. Okay. And uh, now, as of this recording, you've seen him for how, uh, like you said, a little over two months. Correct. Two and a half months. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was exactly when that you had sex. Um, I'd say probably the second week of January. All right. So about six weeks in. Correct. Because he had stated to you that he couldn't see himself moving forward without the sex being a component of it. Not exactly. That's not what he said, actually. Okay. What did he say? Um, I don't recall the exact things, but he did tell me that it was an important part of our relationship. Mm-hmm. And, um, but he still continued to go out with me even after that, even though I didn't have sex with him. And what did you say to him? You said, and I want to know exactly because it's kind of important. When did you state to him that you d- didn't see sex outside of marriage? Um, at some point, um, well, like the first few dates, like the first two dates, he didn't even kiss me. The third date, it was a little peck. Then somehow, maybe on like the fifth date, we then had gone back to his apartment and the kissing got heavier and, you know, other things started going on. So when it came time to, you know, we were getting quite intimate and he wanted, you know, he, I guess, assumed we were going to have sexual intercourse. I stopped him Mm -hmm. and I told him this. Yes. I see. And I'm sorry, what date was it that you went back to his apartment the first time? Probably like the fifth date. Okay. So that sounds, you know, in our modern society, it sounds actually kind of slow. Yeah. (laughs) Right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I really, I really tried to make it as slow as I possibly could. (laughs) Right. How soon after you said, I see sex within the confines of marriage between you saying that and then you actually having sex? Um, I'd say we still kept on about maybe another four or five more dates and fooling around. And okay. he was very respectful about it. He fooled around with me, but he didn't try to push sexual intercourse in any way. It wasn't until I personally um, we had that conversation and then a couple more times and then, you know, mm-hmm. I told him, um, you know, if, you know, cause he had told me he loved me and that, you know, and 
and everything else. And, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it, it seemed to me like if it was very serious, so I gave him the okay, which I know is still too soon. I understand this, but can't go back now. <laughs> right. Yes. And so you kind of said it for me. And here's why I say in your particular case, it was fast. He is very, sounds very achieved. Yes. And uh, well healed, well off. And would you say like an A type personality guy? Definitely. Okay. So he's used to a lot of what in whatever he's done, competition and yes. challenge. Yes. And it sounds like he's certainly thrived on that to the exclusion of everything else. Yes. Meaning he's in his late 50s and although he states he wanted marriage and perhaps a family, he never did it. Correct. So he didn't want it more than he wanted the success in his career. Obviously. And that can indicate that he was highly motivated by or certainly, um, this is kind of a heavy word, but maybe even addicted to the, the, the challenge and the conquering and the success in his career and business yes. life. Yes, and that's something that I've told him. You sure you're not going to miss this? And he says, no, he's tired of it and he wants to explore this other side of his life. Yeah. Um, he says, I want to go um, enjoy what I, explore my, that side of my life that I have. And he says he has no need to work anymore anyways. He says, yeah, he can keep on working his whole life, but financially he has no need to do it anyways. And that's likely true for him in this moment. He's probably burned out a bit. He's tired of it. And he knows that he's going to be solvent or financially fine should he retire now. But it, it's very important for us not to correlate that to you. Okay. That's where we, because of our femaleness and how we love, it's easy for us to do. So we will need to um, up the ante. Yes, agreed. Yes. That's what, and, I'm for, what I need to do to up the ante. <laughs> right. Because I'm hearing that he's starting to feel what naturally happens for us once we have sex, like you said, and what I put in my book, that you are getting closer, more connected, and bonding through the time and sex with him. Yes, correct. And I remember even telling him this before I had sex. I was like, I don't want to become emotionally attached to you. And he says, well, actually, that sounds like a very good thing for you to become emotionally attached to me, he told me. Well, sure, that's, that's his maleness wanting that to happen. Right. But you see, you're correlating it to ultimate commitment. Right. He wants to conquer. You know, he's about those three things, right? So he wants to conquer. Yes, and he's told me he's a goal-oriented person. He likes to win. Yes. And he told me at one point something about me in this reference, yes. What did he tell you about you in the reference? I don't recall exactly what he said, um, uh-huh. but it was something like this. He's like, I, I only win or something like that. He's a goal oriented. Not, not, I know it sounds like ugly. He's actually a very nice person. He didn't say it in an ugly way, but it was basically what he said. And, and I don't take that as ugly because that's just his maleness. Okay. Uh, we really have to know that men are those three C's at their core, and that doesn't make them bad. Right. It's how they do what they do, and if they treat people well along the way. So there's a difference between uh, being a challenger uh, and competing 
and winning fairly and squarely and conquering fairly and squarely or being a jerk about it. And it sounds like he's, you know, a stand up guy and it's fair and square, but he enjoys that. Right. Sure. And it is, you know, it's all we need to know in terms of that is sports and being a worthy opponent. Yes. And, and I would like to be a worthy opponent. Yes. Right. And it's so great that you are thinking along these lines. This will serve you very, very well. And the tweaking does need to occur so that you you can go the distance and that he will want to lock it down in order to win. Yes. And that's seeing you as the worthy opponent. And we can think of that as in the rulesy word, it's that's the prize, right? When you're the prize. Right. So first and foremost is because most relationships are uh, done with a, a high percentage of texting. Are you doing the five R's of texting and uh, making him wait, varying up the times, not asking questions? Yes. Great. So no questions in text. Mm -hmm. We don't actually text maybe that much. Um, now that he's out of town, but, um, he's usually busy. He works a lot. So we don't really text much. Morning, okay. day, and then in the evening, three times a day. But let's go through just a typical, because I think it would be helpful. So for example, he texts you in the morning, something, what's a typical text? Um, I can read it right off of my phone, but no, um, yeah. it's good morning, honey. Well, I'll give you an example right now. <laughs> I'll look okay, at great. Um, let's open up my text from today. So, let's see. Good morning, honey. Were you able to sleep? Do you feel you are rounding the corner and getting past COVID? And a picture outside his window of the snow. All right. And did you answer that? No, that was at 9.16 a.m. And I answered him at about 11 a.m. You did. Okay. And what did you answer? Good morning, sweetheart. The, no, the snow looks very pretty from the window. And Joy, I'm a little better each day. So I think I should be done with COVID in a few days. And then, whatever, I just told him something about that. I was up until four in the morning making some phone calls. And then he says, oh, hope the calls um, prove productive. Maybe take a nap today. And then I told him about some other things. So a little bit more than we would usually talk because he's out of town. What more did you, what were you telling him about um, what? Well, about um, some legal aspects about something that I'm taking care of. And then he was like, yeah, it's a very slow process, but I'm glad to see that it's, you know, happening. And then I didn't write to him back. And then he wrote to me back again, like an hour later, telling me about how he's taking care of some things over there. So I answered him back maybe like 30 minutes after that. And, um, and then I asked him about somebody in his family and he answered me back about that. And um, and then I just told him something about somebody else because of the whole COVID situation. And um, then I didn't tell him anything else. And then like about 30 minutes later, he starts texting me again about something, sends me another picture outside his window. So a lot of texting, but I guess, you know, he's out of town. So maybe <laughs> that's why. Okay. But it's interesting hearing it on this end. Mm-hmm. When I said, do you ask questions? You said no. But there were some questions in there. Oh, I do. Yeah, of course. You know, you know, how, how are you doing? How are things? You know, how's whatever? How's your family member? Yes, yeah, things like that. Okay, that's questions. Okay. Is and that bad? <laughs> that needs to be tweaked. Okay, okay. Hmm. What do questions, and I, I have a YouTube video on this that's very helpful. It's my number one texting tip. Okay. So anyone who's listening, watch that. It goes more into it. The why of no questions, and, and it, it's not socially normative, right? For example, you text me this morning. Uh, hi, Paula, how are you? 
if I text back, it would be normative for me to say, you know, what's happening with me and then how are you, correct? Yes, and that's how I text him back. And you're saying this is wrong? It, I, when I use the words, you know, I don't use wrong or, you know, you can't or what have you, very, very rarely do I use those terms. Not I, ideal then, <laughs> let's what's say. What's that? Let's just say not ideal then is what you mean. Exactly. Okay. And we want to get to ideal. Yes, Because definitely. with this high-level man who is very high up on the scale of needing to achieve and conquer, you need to be a very serious, worthy opponent. So these are, I'm not saying that any of this, you know, oh my gosh, if you don't do this, your relationship is going to go off the rails. We're making it the best it possibly can be so that you are the highest worthy opponent. So you are the Steph Curry to his LeBron James. Okay. Right? Yes. That's okay. what I want. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So this is why I say watch the number one uh, texting rule and the five R's of texting. I'm writing it down. Mm -hmm. Great. Here's why we don't ask questions in text. What does a question in text imply? Interest. Yes. And getting an answer. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, interest in getting an answer, what energy comes to mind, male or female? Masculine, yeah. Right, right. Now, this is very subtle, but it's high level for the opponent's strategy. Definitely. So what we do is we take what we would like to ask in text and simply turn it into a statement. Because when you just make a declarative statement in text, what can that imply? Well, I'm, I guess more confidence. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it can. But it mm -hmm. can also imply that this texting thread can be over. Okay. It's done. Okay. You are not continuing it. Because okay. that's another thing that questions imply. Right. I want to continue this. Okay. See, if anything, norm, like my natural tendency, like what I, when I answer him, want to do is just not ask anything. And I ask just to be nice, <laughs> really. Ah. And it's funny that you put it that way. That's, that's so important to recognize. And I always say that we as women, lose otherwise good men and great possibilities and even good relationships with the men we desire because of three little words. We're too nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he's not with you for you to be nice to him. Now that can sound strange. But psychologically, how it works for men is very, very, very different than how it works for us. Can I interrupt a second just to ask something? I do try to be a little bit careful because I've heard him make comments about women he's dated in the past. And when they've done something that's rude, he's ended the relationship right there. So I kind of am a little extra cautious of being nice because of that. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, so you're falling into a bit of a trap mm -hmm. of what he has said about other women, and that we can do. Okay. And when I say that we can do, we have to fight off hearing what he says about other things and that um, we then go the other route completely. Yeah, and I've even heard him, like, to a friend that we met up with, like, I heard him, I, he didn't know I was hearing, but he was commenting about me, about positive qualities about me, and he was saying that I'm extremely polite. So, 
he likes that about me, but yes, exactly. I still need to know how to play the game <laughs> while being polite. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not ever suggesting that you be rude, um, outright dismissive, unkind, not at all. When I say too nice, it, it's, it's very different than being um, kind, honest, uh, caring, or not dismissive. What I mean in the too nice is that because we relate via verbalization, our too nice can hurt us in that way. It's very subtle and it's hard to explain, but there is a difference. Because at their core, a man wants to win only with a high-level competitor. And that's in everything a man does. So in these previous relationships, he stated that the woman was rude. That tells me two things. That he has encountered that a number of times and ergo we could extrapolate that he's likely attracted to uh how should i put this um women who can be rude or even bitchy and when i say attracted that's normal. One of the most uh, well-known and prolific books for uh, relationships for women has been on the market for probably over 30 years is Why Men Love Bitches. Yes, I've read it. <laughs> right? Yeah. And that word the author used, you know, to attract attention, but it's something that's in our world and that everybody can relate to. It's not that they want to be with a bitch at all. It's they want a high value woman who holds her own, doesn't let him get away with things and presents herself as very high value and is a worthy opponent. That's really what it is. And when we're too nice, it doesn't give that feeling to the man. So let's use some examples because I think the examples will help you more than the talk about it. Definitely, yes. Yes. So you get the text in the morning at nine and he asks you how you're doing with COVID and you don't answer till 11 something. Great. That shows what? I'm not at your beck and call. I'm not, you know, my phone isn't attached at the hip. Uh, I have my own thing going on. I'll answer you when I answer you. Great. And as I talk about in the five hours of texting, you want to vary up the time. Sometimes you answer in 10 minutes, another it's 110 minutes, another it's 1,010 minutes, and then it's in 10 minutes again, and then it's uh, uh, 100,010 minutes. You see? I, you vary it. That I definitely do. <laughs> Great. So he asks you, and then you feel compelled to ask him. Correct. Okay. All you have to do is take whatever you would be asking and turn it into a statement. So he says something like, uh, are you feeling uh, better today or is your fever over or uh, how's it going with your COVID, etc." You want to respond with something in kind like, you know, how are you feeling? Correct? Correct. So instead of that, you make it a statement and you say, I hope you're feeling better too. Or state, um, 
for example, you say, well, I'm not very good today. You know, my symptoms are worse today. The statement would be then, I, I hope your symptoms haven't worsened. Okay. You see the subtle difference between the statement and the question? Yes. The statement can be an ending. It doesn't require or try to elicit a response. That's the salient point. So it's important for me to try to end most texts that he sends me? Like, That's right. As soon as possible. It's not necessarily as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. What it is is that you're showing, I want to keep this going. And in the I want to keep this going, the man doesn't need to be trying to get your time and attention. Okay. Without him trying to achieve it, it doesn't mean very much to him. And if we think of a relationship as points along a line, dots along a line, all the little dots add up to the end point of the line, correct? Yes. These are your little dots. And these little dots are what make up the line. So they are as important as the line itself because it is the line itself. And just to ask something, I should never be the first one to text them in the morning, right? Or, or every once in a while I should. I think it's very important, you know, I call myself an 80-20 roles coach. Okay. Because I believe that in everything in life, the sweet spot is 80-20. Okay. But in order for us, when we are smitten, mm -hmm. in love, crazy about someone, wanting to be with someone, it's very important to strive for the 100%. Okay. Because if you don't strive for the 100%, you're likely not going to reach the 80. Okay. Yeah, because if anything, I, I tend to actually be a little too much. Like I've had guys that I've dated before. If anything, somebody I was actually dating at the same time I was dating Jaden um, at the beginning, like I totally, completely ignore them. And they're like, look, I need to see some interest on your part. Like guys complain that I don't, show enough interest <laughs> guys mm -hmm. that I'm not interested in <laughs> though, but whatever. Yeah. And, and, and that's so par for the course, right? We yeah. have all, it's always, you know, there's that statement. It's always the guy I don't want. Yeah. Yeah. And actually this other guy I was dating at the same time called me like a couple of weeks ago because he realized that I'm dating Jaden and told me, would you accept a proposal from me? <laughs> he asked me. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So from ignoring him, yeah, it worked, but I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> but interesting. How did he know you were dating someone else? Because I have him on my social media. Already? Um um who the well my my boyfriend is but also the other guy I was dating yeah because uh, okay. i just just a friend okay. so and i just right. thought it was a friend and then he was like oh hey is that your boyfriend and then he called me <laughs> all right so we hit on another really important point i'm a little shocked that he's on your social media well actually i'll tell you what it is i don't have him like on um uh on a like a post what it is is that there was a weekend that we had gone out as a group of people and um, he was, it's not like, it looks like if he's my boyfriend, it just looks like if he's somebody that's there and some of the videos that I had put on 24 hour stories, he pops up in a couple of the things. But I guess, you know, if you put two and two together, you can kind of figure out that him and I maybe have something. So obviously that's why this person contacted me. Yeah. Okay. But I haven't posted anything else, any stories or anything where he comes out. And that was just one time. Okay. So it, it was not intentional is what I'm hearing? No, no. Like it wasn't like, um, you know, uh, like a cutesy, you know, couple-y thing. We were with other people um, having fun, partying, and he was there, but he's next to me. So, you know, 
if somebody's looking, they can figure out that probably him and I have something, but it's not obvious, you know. Okay. So that's a a little bit of a, a tricky thing. And yeah. I'm saying this not just for you, Alejandro, but for listeners. That you want to guard your social media uh, like you do your private parts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because men, again, we're going with the three C's of men. They're all about when you think of uh, it, when you want to think of men about getting in, getting into your phone, getting into your car, getting into your apartment, getting into your uh, social media, getting into you. Men are all about at their core, getting in. And when you allow them in without the concurrent time and vetting process, it lowers their wondering. Yes. And through time, it lowers the possibility of commitment. Yes. So you want to be, for anybody listening to this, guarding your social media. So for example, you're out and you're with a a group of people and he's hugging on you and kissing you and they're taking video. Uh, That's one thing. But if you are doing it, you want to be sure you're not posting that because you don't want to show the world. You might even want to show the world, but you can't because it will show him that you're showing the world. Exactly, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the weekends that you're spending together, mm-hmm. what does that look like? Well, we go, like I said, we go out on a date usually one weeknight. I, usually we'll go out on a weeknight. I spend the night with him. Next morning, he um, will take me home if he has time. If not, he'll send me home on an Uber. Um, and then on the weekend, usually he'll pick me up or have me picked up, whatever, and we'll go out to dinner. Um, you know, we meet at his place, we go out then to dinner and then I come back, stay with him usually for two nights and then go home Monday morning. So when you hear yourself say it, what do you think? I mean, it sounds like if we've been in a relationship for a long time, but... And by I guess by that is that what you mean? A bit, yes. I, I do live a little bit far from him. It is a big city, but yeah. Uh huh. And he likes me. He's I mean, even before we were having sex, I was spending the night because he says he likes to spend the night with me. So before you had sex, you were spending the night. So when did that start? Um, New Year's Eve, because that was, it was going to be complicated to get home. Because So I spent that night with him. And then since then, pretty much most of our dates. Yeah. So really, because you said December 2nd, by New Year's Eve, which is just a month away, you were spending the night. Correct. Not having sex, but spending the night. Yes. Okay. And so again, we'll, we think of right now that that can be a bit long. It's really not. Yes, I know. Not, no, it's not. No, no, I know. Right. And he kind of, he got his way. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't even ask me, actually. He just told me, he goes, um, plan on spending the night because it's not safe to get home New Year's Eve. <laughs> and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But did you spend it in his bed? Yes. Well, by then we were, you know, we were, we were kissing and doing things. We just weren't having sexual intercourse. Right. But what does he know then about what you say? Well, as far as what I had told him about that, only having sex inside of marriage, obviously I didn't keep up to that word, (laughs) but he told me, he was like, well, you know, you know, he said that he couldn't believe that at my age and it's not like I was a virgin or anything that that's something that, you know, that I would, you know, uh, commit to. Right. But we need to look at it 
from the male, the deepest male brain, his reptilian brain, that right. has no language, that, <laughs> it's true, it's our reptilian brains, when we were first, you know, first humans on this earth, had no language. Okay. Kind of like animals. Okay. Animals have incredible instincts. They don't have language. Okay. It's like they know what to do. Like you watch a bird build a nest. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? No language. They do it together. The male and female do it together. Right. So the point being that he knows that he can push you off your stance easily. Yes. Unfortunately. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And that's not worthy opponent. No. It's he not. knows that your word didn't mean much. Yes. And it's completely understandable how it occurred. And from the perspective of being interested in somebody and wanting to be with them, it's really hard not to move it forward and yes you are a you know you're 44 years old and you have adult children and you know you've had two marriages and and not are not you know like his, you said not a virgin not however the, the point is is that for him he's achieved something yes and so you really now must show that you are not going to be all in. He's now getting a great, wonderful deal from this. Yeah. He gets weekends mm -hmm. with all that he loves. And he's, he's getting everything. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. So there will need to be along the way, if you want to achieve that engagement, some, some tweaking. And of course, I can't give all of that to you here because it's going to be with the details, of week to week. Yeah. And, that's, I, and one thing, I'm sorry, and one thing is that I, in a couple of months, I do plan on going back to my home in Europe, and he has asked me to please Please, that he would like to spend some time with me over there, but I will be gone for at least a month. Not Wonderful. A <laughs> I think that's a good thing, right? <laughs> it is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Because men love through wondering and longing. Yeah, but he wants to go over there, mind you. He says at least for two weeks. <laughs> so you'll, you'll see. And you're going to be very busy, and he's going, that's a really good time to pull up on his wondering and longing and that you will show energy away from him. Okay. Right? Energy so away it from. Count. It doesn't count now because he's the one that went away, right? It doesn't count in the same way. Right. You're right. Mm -hmm. But you can start to do these little tweaks that we talked about. So the five hours of texting using emojis and text and and not language but emojis are fantastic you can look at my youtube on that with I do uh, that. using emojis yeah i do that instead of words i do it a lot yeah great because it makes him wonder and to be sure not to put him in the quote-unquote family way prior to him making a formal public commitment. Which is an engagement only, right? In this case, yes. Oh. Some are people are not able to marry because of certain... Um, they're actually not able to marry because of certain um, estate things. Uh, oh, understood. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, engagement. Has he put you on his social media? Uh, no, he hasn't because he has it public. Mine is private. Okay. He doesn't put anything on his social media at all, basically. 
Okay. So how did this other guy that you were dating, how did he see it on your social I, media? I have him in my private social media, like as a friend. Okay. Like so, that he can see what I do, what I put. All right. So this is something else that will serve you well. Mm-hmm. And, and I hear it a lot these days, and I think it is not beneficial for women at all. And that is, you know, you're, you, met, you meet someone from online dating app and they want to be friends mm -hmm. or you want to put them in the friend zone. Mm -hmm. That will not serve you well on so many levels. Okay. First of all, we want to make sure that the men know we are not on a dating app to find male friends. And why do we want them to know that? Well, because we, we want something else with them. Yes, but most importantly, when you first meet someone, like you said, you weren't attracted to Jaden. Yeah. Well, both of them, both my boyfriend and this person, when I was dating them, they requested to become my friends and my personal private social media. And I actually didn't accept them at first. It wasn't until like at least a couple of weeks later that I accepted them because I really exactly don't like people seeing my private affairs <laughs> that really I don't good, share with really, my family and friends. <laughs> really, really good point. And I'm really glad you brought it up. Yeah, I, no, I, no, yeah. I, I, it was after, after a couple of weeks. that I, and I even told my boyfriend, I was like, look, um, uh, I, I know you sent me a friend request and I kind of have been hesitant to accept you because on there it's at my private account and I have pictures like with my ex-husbands, you know, and things like that. And he's like, oh, it's okay, you know, I, I know it's in my, I mean, it's my private things. I'm not sure you should be seeing this. And he's like, look, we've done very private things. This was like after we had already had sex that I accepted him into my private social media. So. And I'm going to tell you way too soon. Okay. For anybody listening, way too soon. Again, you let him in. Yes. Okay. And he even uh, challenged you to it. Well, we do private things, and we so I should be in there. <laughs> and you did it. Right. It's it's so maddening in a way, that if we comply with what a man wants and his words, we get the opposite. Mm. And this is what I mean when I talk about being a worthy opponent, because it's so hard for us to see the forest for the trees. So am I too late? Have I messed everything up or can I still? <laughs> <laughs> it's what you do from here. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be contextual with what happens. And so this is what I work with in my programs because the devil is in the details week to week. Because it's very hard to give an overarching, okay, this is what you do, and I give this to you in a 30-minute or an hour talk, and then it's going to lead to marriage in a year. Because here, we just found out, and wonderful, 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 that you recognized, even maybe not the details, but that I should maybe check here and see what I might be doing better that could help ensure that I get there. That's amazing. Because most of us don't think about that. We just go along, right? And he's saying what he's saying. And so you think, okay, it's going along. Oh, no, I've had plenty of experience to know that it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And it doesn't, unfortunately, because if it did, we wouldn't have the relationship problems we have in the world if it did. If men related via verbalization and their words in the moment, which are true for them in the moment, had a, a flow through and a, a through line to them, there wouldn't be these issues. I liken it to this because. Uh, you get the puppy principle really well, right? 
Yeah, it's, it's great. It's an awesome principle, yeah. Here's what it's like. So, you know, like, for example, in New York City, I walk on the street and there's all manner of cute puppies, everything from the teeniest, tiniest little um, chihuahua to the biggest Great Danes and Mastiffs and all of those, everything in between. And you're walking along and you walk up to somebody who's got a, a, you know, four month old puppy. And oh my gosh, it comes out of you. Just, oh my God, that's the cutest little thing. It just comes out of us, right? That's like a guy on the street uh, Mm -hmm. whistling at you or making a sound or getting your attention or whatever. It just comes out of him when you walk by. So you do that and then you bend down and you are playing with the puppy and the, the owner lets you and the puppy's just the most adorable thing that's jumping up on you, giving you a kiss, and then sits there and looks up at you and lets you put its little head in, in both your hands. And it comes out of me and you say, oh, my God, you're the cutest thing ever. I love you. In that moment when you're saying that, it's absolutely true. Correct? Yes. Yeah. That feeling is just, it just comes over you and it comes out of you. And it's very true in that moment. But the love, we know what it means, right? The owner is not going to say, oh, you love it? Well, here, take it. And you say, okay, I'll adopt him. You see? No. Yeah. That would be ludicrous. Right. But in that moment when we say it, that feeling is upon us. And that is men with us. Yes. And so we have to take it a bit with a grain of salt. It's why we say we don't listen to what they say. We watch what they do. Yes. And, of course, with humans, it's, it's much more contextual and complicated and details, however. But the same idea holds that we don't say he was a liar when he said, I love you, because he wasn't lying in that moment at all. But for him, commitment is a decision. And that is like us and why the puppy principle is so profound. That is us saying, I love all puppies, but I found this one and I will commit to be responsible to it and for it by adopting. Yes, and that's what I want to be adopted. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, and, and you know, your concept, I mean, not, I'm not talking about my particular case, but because of my age now and experience, I can understand what you're saying but um i wonder when a woman is at a younger age just out of curiosity she and doesn't have experience and it would be really good for them to know this like are they able to understand this concept unfortunately i'll put that in two very opposing ways unfortunately no and in some ways Fortunately, no. (laughs) And what I mean by that is that to know this at a very young age is fantastic. And there are some women who they got the right modeling. uh, They just get it. And they're rare in early 20s, even up to 30. And even 30s, a lot of women don't. But there is a sadness in getting it. Mm, okay. Right? It's like, it's a loss. It's like all your dreams are like, oh my God, the reality sinks in and it's not that pretty. Yeah, yeah. Because now yeah. I can 
fact that I'm 44 years old and like even my first marriage, you know, my husband was always crazy about me, but it was because I didn't want to be with him. <laughs> I spent <laughs> many years trying to leave him and that's why he stayed with me all that time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that, you know, it seems like why should it have to be that way? You know, it's just, it's like an upside down world. Yeah, anyway. and that whoever I had before, after, you know, maybe I liked them, and that's why it didn't work out. <laughs> it was only who I didn't really like. <laughs> I know, it's so, it's it's maddening, and that's mm-hmm. why I say in some ways, it's nice to live your young life without, kind of with the, it's funny because I can't say rose-colored glasses mm-hmm. because my 20s and 30s, um, painful painful stuff there were no i wanted the rose colored glasses to be on but boy were they they were on for only a moment and then smashed to bits <laughs> yeah. and it's it's kind of sad that it, but when we deal with what is we as women get more of what we deserve and the treatment that we desire. And there really is no way around it. And I liken it to, or I say that it would be like expecting women because socially we're in an era whereby you can have sex with as many people as you want to have sex with and you can do whatever you want to do. You have the freedom in the Western world to do whatever you want. Isn't that great? But the reality is your female brain bonds through time and sex if you like a man and you cannot get around that. And so you will be hurt if you don't adhere to what works with the male brain. And that there's no exceptions. All males work like this, correct? Right? For the most (laughs) Well, it's like saying, do you know of a woman who she loves all men and if she could, would like in some way, shape, or form to touch, play with, or have sex with all men and that it will not in any way affect her she can have sex and walk away from it and never think about it again yeah no it's not possible for any woman probably it's not really possible men are on a scale of course but if we think of it in the uber sense of it so to speak that males are males are males we can succeed and that's what I'm all about because I believe women deserve to succeed with men whom they desire and get the relationships they deserve right. and you feel I can still succeed with Jaden applying things correctly I think it's going to be not as not as a uh, slam dunk as you're believing it to be okay. all right and that will be Because what I'm hearing is a little bit of, because he's had the finances in his life to treat women in this high-level way, he's getting his way with you in a way that he has done heretofore, especially given his age. Okay. That you need to be the one who's very different. Okay. I believe that that will serve you. Now, that's going to be hard because you don't want to immediately show your hand. Definitely, yeah. Right? Even the sex part already was, he found it quite unusual. He said that had never happened to him. What happened with me, actually. (laughs) That you waited. Yes, yes. He said he had never experienced this before. (laughs) Isn't that, isn't that too bad? Mm -hmm. right that he's his age late 50s and he never had to wait yeah and he's not a one night stand kind of person he's told me he's never like had sex the first date with somebody or anything like that no 
And that, again, I don't want you to think of that as then, oh, he's definitely one that can commit. No, no, of course not. No, but okay. I, I, I'm actually cautious of the fact that he's never committed. <laughs> this actually scares me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And is he friends with any of his former girlfriends? Yes. No, not that I know of. He's never, he doesn't even talk about it, really, in reality. Very, very, very rarely has it come up in conversation. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's really going to be, again, what you do each week that you are together, mm-hmm. leading him. It's, it's part of my GPS program, the groom yes. positioning system. Yes, it looks very interesting. following mm-hmm. the, the steps that are most likely, and I like it that you are setting your GPS. You're yes. saying, I want to get there, and this is oh, the yes. time frame. Yeah, no, no, he's, he's, for me, for, for my, for me personally, he's what I could say is a good catch. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the important thing is supposedly he sees me as a good catch. So, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's early enough now that it can be very uh, subtle changes. Okay. And not all at once. Uh, and that's what kind of the groom positioning system is. Right, because I, I can see what you're seeing that, like, for example, I'm spending weekends with them and it's almost like if we were like in a almost like married sort of thing in a way, almost like, um, it, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that's how you're seeing it. And that's like too much. Actually fun. not. Oh, OK. OK. No. <laughs> oh, all right. Actually not, because he doesn't have to be responsible to you or for you. So it's very different than marriage to him. Okay. However. It is. A. I have the money to do what I want to do. It's this is going to sound very, very harsh. No, no, so be you know no. be prepared that it's going to sound harsh. I don't but get offended. <laughs> okay, good. That's great um, because that means you're really open to no, this <laughs> and and are very, very wise in and know that it's not in any way a criticism, but. I am always looking at things from the male perspective and where the man is in terms of his, uh, you used a word I'd never heard before. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, his social milieu has a lot to do with it. But there, because he has the money, there is an essence of that I think you want to get away from a pay to play. So again, the the little details are going to be important in terms of the texting and uh, the spending the weekends. You're going to have to start here with you know I'm you go like it's a normal weekend and then you do something a la. Um, I'm going to get need, need to get going this morning. I'm taking a class and blah, blah, blah. Mm, okay. Not spending the week, not like spending the night, but then leaving the next day. Uh, yeah. Um, doing, you've got to change it up. Okay. You can knock it into a pattern of spending the weekends. Why would he, when, when you think about men mm-hmm. and loving puppies, and you know, my example in the book, Mm-hmm. Every single weekend, the friend brings me the wonderful puppy to be with and right. take it around and love on it all weekend. I could do that without any intention. And when she comes a year later and says, hey, I have to move to Dubai, I can't take puppy with me. Mm-hmm. Like, w- Wait a minute. You know, that's not what I signed up for. That wasn't, you know, what we've been doing all year, you see? Mm-hmm. Even this early on, I should already start changing it. It, it got, you're calling him boyfriend. Mm-hmm. He's on your social media mm-hmm. in terms of he and this other, we didn't really talk about this, but this other friend after two weeks, a guy you met on, 
it, it, no, nobody's in your personal uh, private social media. No man. Okay. Um, that's long term. You know, college friend, uh, married friend. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we all have uh, colleagues. Um, right. Men that are, it's absolutely 100% completely platonic. Okay. Um, no, there is a, a feeling that when I said remember, you're putting him in the family way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, yeah. yeah. And that's the feeling. Mm-hmm. And so, you well, know, this, this is, is something that he craves. But, I can, I can <laughs> but again, you have to understand when you give the man what he craves, what happens? The craving stops. Right. And there's not the possibility. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking this, that if this is what he wants and he's obviously he's not going to jump into getting married with me in a month or anything like that. Um, but he's wanting this. This. Um, uh, closeness in a relationship, um, there's not the possibility that then he would think, well, you know, I need to find somebody else that gives this to me. No, um, you are giving it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's to the degree and in the way. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I remember when we, like, when we had that sex conversation that he told me that he wasn't dating anybody else but me, and he didn't want to date anybody else. But he needed to know if we were going to let this happen at some point or if he needed to start dating other people, you know, because he wasn't going to wait a year, year and a half to become intimate with me. I guess he meant because in a year, year and a half is that I guess he would like get married or whatever. I don't know. This is sort of like what I understood by what he meant. Understood. But I'm hearing a lot. And if we were to work together, we would be working on keeping you focused and in line with. If you Mm -hmm. go by what he is telling you Mm -hmm. and satisfying his cravings, because this is how the female mind works. Mm -hmm. This is what he said, because we relate via verbalization. This is what he says. So this is what I need to do to show him X. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's in a way, it's a very contextual, but almost antithetical to -hmm. what would seem natural for us to do, if that makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's why it's important to understand uh, that it's, I said to someone last night in working with them in one of my um, programs that my job is almost always simply showing a woman the, the trees in the forest. Okay. You see, because that's really what it is because you have, a, a, a lot of understanding, knowledge, um, all of it. You're completely capable. It's the human condition that we get in our, you know, we can't see the forest for the trees. You're lovely. You want to give to him. It's a natural stance of uh, catering to his his desires and loving him and all of that. It comes absolutely natural to us. So it's very hard to um, understand, well, where do I pull back? And to what degree? How do I navigate now being a little different that is going to uh, continue to make him wonder and and tweak his need to lock it down so that he doesn't lose out, et cetera, et cetera. That's that's really um, hard to do on your own. Yes, definitely. And and also, I don't I don't want to appear distant either. Exactly. Yeah, right. I can do that. that. That's why I'm afraid. It's a fine line. I'm either very, very. Distant or I'm very like the other way. <laughs> so exactly. It is a you hit the nail on the head. It is a very fine line. And that's what it is. It's the fine tuning. Um, like, for example, um, you know, it's working with someone again in a program and. You know, we're working with these texting. Um, you know, concepts and my five hours of texting. But for her, because she's a very, um, you know, she's like a scientist and very black and white and so forth, she didn't add in any of the feminine touches. And I could see that 
you know, when she came to me weekly and saying, well, this is doing X with him and blah, blah, blah. And then, then it would be, well, read me the text. And immediately I saw that for him was absolutely cold, unfeeling, and he got the idea that she was blowing him off. Hmm. You see, the devil is in the details dependent upon each woman and the man she is with. The Many times the coaching that I'm giving to someone, uh, what I would be giving to you, I would have to give in a much different way to someone else. Of course. Yeah. And that, that again, the devil is always in the details with everything. The sweet spot is 80-20. Uh, but I think that with a little work, you can absolutely be on track and certainly pull this into the station of being engaged. And in this case, because your man is set with what he wants to do and he's going to be selling his business and retiring within a year, he's going to want to know what's next and what's ahead for him. And that's a very good place to be. Right. Because so the can, fact that he's never committed is not something that I should be afraid of? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> okay. and, and yeah, it, it absolutely can be. And that's why we want to keep you out of the category of women that he's been with. And while you're thinking, well, then I have to be really nice because he's had women that have been rude. Again, that's, we don't want to go just by what he says. We want to go by simply what you are doing right. to show him that you are of value and that you are in the first category, you know, my two categories of women, Freudian, uh, of marriage material, okay. not just to have fun with, right. but again, putting him in the family way too soon is not going to serve you. Okay. Yeah. So I, I thank you for doing this today. Thank it's, you. Oh. Yes. Uh, I, I know that you can do this, and uh, perhaps we'll talk about doing it together so that you are ensuring that that goes the distance for you, and if so, yeah. we'll do that off the air. But I thank you for doing this today. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Paula. Absolutely. Great discussion. I love that Alejandra understands that things just don't go the distance because in the beginning the feelings are apparent and he's showing he's all in and even saying the right things. This is so important to know because men don't commit out of love alone. And the longer we go, sometimes deluding ourselves that we can not really be the one steering things in the right direction doesn't serve us at all. And it's a sad fact, but it's, it's true. And when we know something and we really get it, it's it's the truth sets us free type of deal. It's not so sad when we see what it is in the realm of men and women that we need to do. It would be like saying, it's a sad fact that we as women don't typically understand cars and know how to fix them. Well, is it really sad? No, because men love to do that, and they do it well, they enjoy it, and we can let them do that. It's more, however, an art. It's a bit of science, too, of course, but an art in how we must be the mechanics of our relationships. So I trust this was valuable today for you if you are in a situation like Alejandra's and that you can know that with a few tweaks and setting your GPS, 
in the right direction, making the right turns and listening to what is really going on can help you. Now, as we saw with Alejandra, it's not so easy to see them. And it's why I find the GPS program so valuable for the women that I work with. I simply help to be that GPS voice week to week, explaining we just need to take a different turn here. Turn left, turn right. Let's make sure the man is getting what you are intending, keeping yourself in a position of value, being the worthy opponent. It is so difficult to see the forest for the trees. And I often say, that's what my job is, to allow you to see the forest as well as the trees. So if you want more, make sure to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Coach Paula Grooms at both places, and of course, Facebook. Simply find me on Facebook, and you can send me a friend request, and then you can be in my private group, Wonder Women, because as we know, being here, that with any man in your life, you must remember to make him wonder. Thank you for listening to Make Him Wonder. If you've benefited from today's conversation, please subscribe and share. Connect with Coach Paula at makehimwonder.com. There you can take several relationship evaluations Discover her books and other resources and find out if one of her personalized coaching programs might be right for you.